Imagine standing on the edge of one of the world's most iconic landscapes, the Sahara Desert. Before you stretches a vast sandy expanse, where the relentless heat and dry winds have pushed the limits of survival. For centuries, this massive desert, the largest hot desert on Earth, has shaped the lives of millions across the African continent. Yet now, a monumental vision has emerged to halt its relentless advance. It's called the Great Green Wall, a vast stretch of trees, plants, and sustainable land practices that together are meant to stop desertification in its tracks, revive soil health, and restore life to one of the most arid regions on the planet. Spanning across the continent, from Senegal to Djibouti, this ambitious project is changing lives, ecosystems, and perhaps even the future of the Sahel region. Today, we journey into the heart of Africa's Great Green Wall. We'll look at its origins, the science behind it, the people fighting for it, and the critical role it plays in the battle against climate change. The Sahel region runs like a belt across the northern part of Africa, stretching approximately 5,400 kilometers from the Atlantic coast of Senegal to the Red Sea coast in Djibouti. It's a unique transition zone, a fragile ribbon of land separating the Sahara Desert in the north from the tropical regions of sub-Saharan Africa in the south. This ecosystem is home to more than 100 million people and supports countless species of wildlife, from migratory birds to gazelles. But over the last few decades, the Sahel has faced enormous environmental pressures. Desertification, a process where fertile land turns into desert, has devastated local ecosystems. This phenomenon isn't only caused by natural climate cycles, but also by human activities, overgrazing, deforestation, poor land management, and the increasing impacts of climate change. The consequences are severe. An estimated 30 million people in the Sahel are affected by desertification, experiencing crop failures, food shortages, and water scarcity. In countries like Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Chad, desertification has been one of the main forces driving poverty, hunger, and migration, forcing people to leave their ancestral lands in search of a better life. For the people of the Sahel, the Green Wall represents more than an environmental effort. It's a fight for their very survival. Without intervention, experts predict that the Sahara could advance southward at a rate of about half a mile each year, consuming arable land and destroying fragile ecosystems. The idea of the Great Green Wall was first proposed in the 1970s by Thomas Sankara, a revolutionary leader in Burkina Faso, who imagined a green belt to fight desertification. However, the project officially gained momentum in 2007 when the African Union launched it as a continental initiative with the support of global partners. The initial vision was straightforward, to plant a wall of trees across Africa. However, as scientists and environmentalists joined the project, it became clear that more was needed than just a line of trees. The Green Wall evolved into a comprehensive landscape restoration effort, a vast mosaic of vegetation, sustainable agriculture, and ecological preservation. The new vision aimed not only to halt the desert, but also to restore 100 million hectares of land, create 10 million jobs, and sequester 250 million tons of carbon dioxide by 2030. This bold vision drew support from the United Nations, World Bank, European Union, and organizations worldwide. But the true work would need to happen on the ground, within communities. The project brought together 11 African countries, Senegal, Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Djibouti, each facing its own environmental challenges, yet all committed to building the wall. The Green Wall is not simply about planting trees. It's a living, breathing project that incorporates the science of soil, water, biodiversity, and climate. It's about creating resilient ecosystems that can withstand the harsh conditions of the Sahel. Scientists and environmentalists work with communities to implement agroforestry, a method where trees, crops, and livestock coexist harmoniously. Trees like the Acacia Senegal and native species are chosen for their drought resistance and soil fortifying properties. This tree provides natural gum that communities can harvest and sell, creating a sustainable income source. But the project must adapt to each region's unique conditions. In some areas, traditional zy pits, small holes filled with organic material, are used to catch rainwater and encourage plant growth. These zy pits, combined with contour stone bonds, reduce water runoff and enhance soil moisture, allowing plants to survive even in droughts. In other regions, aerial seeding, where planes distribute seeds over large areas, 
is being tested to restore remote landscapes that are hard to reach by foot. These seeds are often coated with nutrients to enhance their chances of germinating, even in poor soil. The green wall also includes grasses and shrubs, which help anchor the soil, prevent erosion, and create habitats for insects and small animals. This diversity increases soil health and resilience, creating a self-sustaining ecosystem that does not rely solely on tree cover. In the Sahel, the green wall is about much more than ecological restoration. It's a social and economic revolution. Restoring the land means restoring livelihoods, dignity, and hope for communities that have long suffered from poverty and environmental decline. Take, for example, the villages of Senegal's furlough region. Here, locals have begun to see the fruits of their labor as the green wall progresses. Farmers, once dependent on unsustainable farming practices, are learning regenerative agriculture techniques. With training in crop rotation, water conservation, and composting, they're reclaiming degraded land and increasing yields. One Senegalese farmer, Bobakar, tells his story. Once, his family struggled to grow enough food, and he considered leaving for the city. Now, thanks to the green wall, he's harvesting more millet and vegetables than ever before. His land, enriched by new trees and soil improvements, supports his family year-round, and he's even able to sell extra produce at the local market. And the transformation extends beyond agriculture. In Niger, women are finding new roles in tree nurseries, cultivating seedlings, and managing community tree planting efforts. These jobs provide vital income and help women achieve economic independence. Moreover, the Green Wall offers a vision of stability in a region plagued by resource-based conflicts. As communities gain sustainable sources of food, water, and income, the competition for scarce resources is reduced, lowering the risk of violent conflict. In Nigeria, the project has become part of peace-building efforts, as it not only restores land but also fosters cooperation among diverse communities. But the path to building the Green Wall is not without challenges. Funding remains one of the largest obstacles. The estimated cost to complete the project is $8 billion, a figure that's difficult to reach given the competing priorities of governments and international donors. Political instability is another significant hurdle. In regions like Mali, Chad, and northern Nigeria, violence from extremist groups has disrupted planting efforts. Security concerns make it hard to ensure consistent progress, leaving some parts of the wall incomplete and fragmented. Critics of the Green Wall argue that a single line of trees cannot solve the region's complex environmental problems. Some point out that focusing too heavily on tree planting can detract from other essential conservation methods, such as water management, soil conservation, and promoting local agricultural techniques. There's also the issue of non-native species, which, if improperly managed, can become invasive and threaten local biodiversity. Despite these concerns, however, the Green Wall continues to progress, learning from each challenge. Over time, the project has shifted from the idea of a single wall to a diverse mosaic of landscapes, each tailored to the region's unique ecological needs. The Green Wall is not just Africa's project. It's a global model in the fight against climate change. Scientists and activists are studying the Green Wall as a potential blueprint for similar projects elsewhere in regions facing desertification and climate challenges, such as Central Asia, the Middle East, and parts of North America.